Hello. Hello, 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 friends. I'm so excited. This game is so cute. I've only played a little bit of it. Uh, and uh, a lot of it is actually has voice acting. So I won't actually read it. Allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1 Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. going. Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died, and it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. What a cutie. Me too. Luca, I knew I'd find you here. Was Luca's closest friend. 
He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Well, after I banged on your door till a grant answered, and after I checked the pond, and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Oh, hi, Revel. Rollo finally noticed the tear swelling in his friend's eyes, and the flowers on the grave. <laughs> oh, Rollo. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone now, gone too. She's not gone, she's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. That's not better, Rollo! Why are you pointing this out? She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. Okay, Dad, see you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. I just love the colors so much. They're like... Okay, so the thing about this game that we gotta do is there's like all sorts of stuff we gotta look at. Cause like... That's so cute! <laughs> this is how we make decisions. That's with our Wonderful. charms. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. I've only played like a very little bit of this game. Enough to like have an idea. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? The side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. Who's they, Rolo? Who's they? They who? Not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. Oh my goodness. All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. It's all the same to you. I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the side when you're done. Suit yourself. I won't be long. Oh my goodness. Adorable. Okay. Okay, thank you. I will do the thing. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. I really like the fact that so much of this Since Grand had moved in, the narrated. house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Hey, Arclithium. I... Like, the vibes are just so good. One of his father's old stethoscopes, Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Only for some of it. When they're talking, I do still have, like, I could let you folks read it, but, uh, we read at different rates, you know? Oops. There, yeah, it's such cozy vibes. Wait, was there a look at the fireplace? Yes, Granny there was. already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Cute. It's the coziest vibes. I love it. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Um, a mostly empty bottle <laughs> of glue. Amazing. Incredible. No, sorry. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Oh. Okay. We'll find Gran. Oh my! This is quite exciting! I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit <laughs> coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Oh my god, Kaya Seti, that's so Excuse cute. Me. 
I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mom. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. So good. This is such a cute game. I love... Hey, Grant, I'm gonna go. For Pete's sakes, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But... But nothing. Inside clothes are for inside, and outside clothes are for Luca outside. stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. Well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? Low blow, Grant, low blow. Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. Right, of course. I forgot about the pajamas. Low blow, Grant, low blow. Oof, it's fine, we're fine. All right. Uh, right, stairs, here, stairs. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. I'm fine. We're fine. Grand had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Oh, thank you, Revel. Thank you. That. Um... Grand's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. I mean, we have that in common, my friend. We have that in common. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Cute sweater. How many charms am I at now? All right, all right, all right. Cool, 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 cool. Fine, Graham. Eight, eight. That's what I get for trying to move while not looking at the screen. We're fine, we're fine. Okay, I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now, where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Grand knew, the better for everyone involved. We were just gonna go chill for the day. Super casual, nothing to worry about here. We're just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. Sounds like my kind of people. We want to stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Adorable. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. This game is kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure book. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. gonna go hide for the day. Who doesn't want to just chill and hide, you know? We're just gonna go hide for the day. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Shh, let me use the word I won't use. Yeah, I guess Rolo bet some other kids that we could beat them in hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. 
I'll make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. All swell, but ends well. All right. Yeah, we're, go we're going. We're going. What's this? A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. All right. Oh, and Luca. You and Rolo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Um, obviously I'm gonna go get in trouble with Luca, like, with Rolo. Hello, who do you think I am? Of course we're gonna go get in trouble. That's the, that's the fun part. Okay. Come on, come on! <laughs> Dang it, Rolo. Even this way. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. You're not being subtle, my guy. Oh my goodness. Chapter two. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. It's like there's no way for us to get by sneakily. Oh yeah, this is definitely a mystery game, fam. Mission control, authorized personnel only. You have a side? How could we be sneaky when you have a side, Rolo? Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. <laughs> Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Like so much? It's always aliens, okay? Okay, what's the t this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. <laughs> You're giving me so much. <laughs> oh, excellent. That place has been empty since... since the fowl harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? Obviously, Rolo. Excuse me. What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. <laughs> a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. Oh my god, exactly. Plain, hide in plain sight and find all the mischief. That's what we're here for today, okay? I got your back. Thanks, Rolo. They're so cute. Now that I think about it, Poking around a crepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. They're so cute. Is there anything else like coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. I love Rolo so much. Like, that's just such a cute thing to do for your friend. Like, oh, you're really sad. I'm gonna try and help you. Wait. Hey, Jetson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me, if you ever want a share back, I've taken a stand in recently. Keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Cute. Oh goodness. 
Oh no. Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook Good for skimming the surface. Okay, let's see how this works. What kind of fishing will this game have? Okay. A feather catches a duck. Amazing. We'll all be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you it'd turn up. He. <laughs> okay, Dad. Okay, okay. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? That's what I want to know. Oh, I thought I lost it. Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. What a cutie this little kiddo is. How do I leave this? Like Well. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound ya. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what face you're talking about. Yup. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but. Rude. If you, if I had a nickel for every yeah, but. I'd be the frickin' king of nickels. I'd be the frickin' king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. Oh my goodness. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Don't mind if I do. Uh-oh. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? All right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? About that. About that. Luca, wait up! I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? Wait, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? Oh, Rolo. <laughs> Don't mind me, just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis! Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. And, or also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank Atomic's shrink array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. You're not wrong, sir. Look, Roxy, Luca, and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Oof. Roll Oof! The, the sibling tension. Him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little 
In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy, it's the first day of summer, the sun's shining, and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. That's so fair. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! Alright, I guess we're gonna go investigate by ourselves, friends. This will be totally fine. So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Does it even just nope? I mean, fair enough. Oh, I should talk to Mr. Wilder before I head out. He might know something about the warehouse. Who's Mr. Wilder? Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day I have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about news. The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm, Rolo. Ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Change. I see what you did. Alright. I guess let's go this way. Hey, Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit chat. Aggressive. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to. I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go. Sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh, goodness. Are you asking a good about the uh, rabbit lady back there. We'll go say hi to her later, maybe. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh, sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into Wheatwood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. Okay, I think I have to go this way. Into the, the woods. Path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Oh, no turning back now. Oh, caution, electrified fence. Is that something new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rollo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rollo would do, so that he could rule out that option. I mean, oof, but also fair enough, my friends. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Um... As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Okay. Something over here. That's One two. More to go. Oh my goodness. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. If only it was that easy to deal with it. Moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rilla wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There's only one way to find out. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rilla's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there.
The water looked almost diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. Ew. Ew. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. This is totally fine. Hello? Shit. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up <laughs> to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. It does sound like we know it. Plants are rotted. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Make a break for it! What have you done? Did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. <laughs> Sorry! Are you, though? Sorry about that. We're all looking good overexcited Solid sometimes. Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune puffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. Ooh, I love those co that color combo. Hello, I'm here for it. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter, how are you doing? Me? Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Feel no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Why do I not feel like uh, you feel that way? Rude. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house? Yeah. And how's that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is rarely around, in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Solomon. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. It's much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Harris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. It's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Okay. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nuncreed. Kinda in a hurry right now. Oh, good. We get to run by this time. Sigh. Boy's got too much of his father in him. What's that supposed to mean? Ooh. I win! Ooh. Little help? Oh, Rolo. Ooh. I am Ooh. the champion. We were racing. Did that road get longer? 
Like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. He's not wrong. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. Are we gonna get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. It's almost like what would Rolo do, do the opposite, was the best choice. Why did you do that? Always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. Oh my goodness. From a safe distance. At least we already know what to do. Whoa, you're a genius. Yeah, sometimes being second place isn't bad, Rolo. Goodness. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? Yes, always. This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. Ace, e. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Oh, goodness. That water is so gross. Get out of the puddle, Rollo. Get out. Check out this puzzle. That's not normal. And this hose. It's so gross. Get away from it, child. Aw, oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice. It won't budge. Oh, well. This dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rolo, it'd be my honor to throw you in the trash. Spoken like a true best friend. Come on, Lady Luck. So what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. I see you, Arc Lithium. I see you over there. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie talkies? Heck yeah, they are. Just Hank Atomic Communicators. Or just like, wow, brain. Do these actually work? Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How, um, how are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. They're so cute. They're so cute. I cannot get over how cute they are. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. <laughs> Scoot over, I'm coming in! Uh, tell me you saw that? Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back! Get down! sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh god, tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca, do you know what separates run-of-the-mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. at the large sack which burdened them. Oh no. Aha! Snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. 
What's it say? Held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, deep engineering. It's a name tag. Who threw away a bag uh, full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag in a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Did they just like read my brain? Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I am not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime covered hand would be in here? I'm fine. We're fine. Hey, Piggy, welcome. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I need to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Not quite sure I follow this logic, but okay. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Isn't he the one who was like... in the dark. Tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps. We should go ran. check this out. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. That's awful. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rollo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. You're so full of it. You're so full of it. Hello? I love the little sounds it makes when you're talking. Calm down. No, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering folks, I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Rand's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You're to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But, but nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here until you get back. Good. Okay. Well, that was strange. Okay, that's just gonna let me chill. What happens if I try and go outside? Luca was desperate to check in with Rollo. Until Gran returned, he was trapped. Rude. An eerie electronic sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. Hello? Is anyone there? I love the sound effects. Ah. Hello? Rollo, is that you? Over? I 
love the way these charms look. They're so cute. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Was someone at my door? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, hey, Roxy. Is this... If this is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday, is Rolo here? No? <laughs> Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night? What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weepwood, and then it was late, and we went home. Weepwood, if he's alive, I'm gonna kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo. Where are you? I was obviously going to look for your friend. When your grandma told you not to leave the house is the better life choice. This is fun. All right. Hey Bert, have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. Oh my god, I'm just leaning against. We're just zooming in and I'm leaning against the bridge. This is the cutest thing of my life. Fine. I don't think I want to talk to a clipboard, you know? Like, I think I'm okay. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she'll be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing and waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around doing nothing and getting paid for it. What a mood, girl. What a mood. Come on, Lumi. Roxy really needs our help. Arg, right, my parents won't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. You're not wrong. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weepwood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right, Fitz and I will check Deep Woods. Weepwoods. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. Adorable. I think the rabbit lady comes back, because I don't see her. So I'm supposed to go to the library. What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is completely under control. It's just all seems so terrible. Are you sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense. Miss Young Mr. Cooter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. You just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has applied you suitable logic. Oh yes, Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter, Beck, that... Look at that cute little couple. Now where did she run off to? His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible. Oh my, he doesn't even see the danger he's in. Incredible, we love that. Wait, what's this? Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Oof. Awkward. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, He'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Ahem. <coughs> oh, hey, Luca, you snuck up on me. Good book? No, no, just started it. He gestured to the shelves. 
I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So what's it? So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy? I... Awkward. Fight. I like how that's how I get a fight charm. Incredible. That's interesting, but... You haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. Who's this one? Mycological phosphorescence. More like... My complete loss of interest. Yes, Arclothium, I feel like you would do real well here. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rolo come by yet? No? I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on days when a new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest hand Katomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by... Tell him to meet me, you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Oh. Roger that, Space Cadet. Rude. Ooh, how's the bookshelf building going, Arclithian? What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. So moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. Oh, nice. Good luck with adding the trim. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around Luca here? Shifted his feet uncomfortably. Luca. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up! What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky. Yep, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to his f find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Go this way? Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked Ooh, on the strange I green liquid. Unlucky Penny merch too. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of... Glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poku with a sick. Luca Incredible. Watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo, Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn green. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay, so the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yup. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Aw, don't say things like that, it hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. 
Why, hello, I don't think we've been properly introduced. Iggy's the name, this is my compatriot Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? Has anyone... has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My family. Ah, well look who's grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First his pops croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Alright, are we going with Tickles or Strange? Tickles or Strange? All right, tickles it is. First person to say something. Time to you bust got out the tickles. Yep. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. What the? Tish is she tickling you? Yep. Hi yep. Hiya? Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us? Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Ooh. Ew. Whoa. What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? It depends what your feelings... What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh god. I mean, I've had gray hair, it's not that bad. Chapter 4. Okay. I'm gonna head out for the night here, I think. Because I'm tired. And a chapter feels like a really good spot to pause. But, uh, this was Beacon Pines. I'm really excited to play more of it in the future. Because it's, uh, real hecking cute. But, uh, thank y'all for joining me today. And I'm not gonna send you to anyone today, but, uh, we will- I'll be back soon. Real soon, I promise. Have a great night, everybody. Bye bye